Okay, so today we're going to be doing some isotope math practice. And the first thing that we're going to be focusing on is how to actually find the mass number and what that even means. Okay, so our very first example here is going to be of AG, which is silver, with a mass of 107. Okay, so we have silver 107, that is going to be our isotope, and we just need to go ahead and identify some things here and figure out what all this means, because I don't actually have a proton count here. So from my actual symbol, I can go to the periodic table, and I can find AG silver. The first thing I want to notice is I want to know what the atomic number is, which is the same thing as my number of protons. So I see from my key that my atomic number is that top number. So that means that my number of protons for silver 107 is going to be 47. Then I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out my number of neutrons. Over here I have a little key, a little cheat sheet here. My mass number, which was that 107 number, minus my number of protons, which was 47. I wrote that backwards. 47 is going to be my number of neutrons. So that all together will give me a total of 60 neutrons. Forgot to write my mass number over here. That's going to be 107. Now, my electrons are going to be something that I need to check up here in the upper right-hand corner for. I don't see a charge here, so that means that I don't have a charge, which means that I am a neutral atom. So my electrons are going to be the same as my protons, which means I have 47 electrons. We're going to do that one more time with argon-40. This is another uh, notation for isotopes. This is just the one that I call isotope notation, and we're going to actually have to find this again. Right now I see that argon 40, that means I have a mass of 40, and I'm gonna find argon on the periodic table. Argon's symbol is AR, its atomic number is 18, which means that it has 18 protons. Since it has 18 protons and I do not see a charge here, that means I also have 18 electrons. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this formula here, and I'm going to say 40 minus 18. That's going to give me my number of neutrons, and that will be 22. So that means I have 22 neutrons. So that's just the real quick, like, how do you tell what's going on here and stuff like that. And we're going to actually start talking about the real, real math here, which is going to be that of average atomic mass. Okay, this is the real easy stuff, addition, subtraction, logic. Average atomic mass is going to require some math skills. So, I have three different isotopes of silicone. I clearly have uh, gone some shorthand here. I have silicone uh, 28, 29, and 30, and then I have their respective abundances. Step one is always going to be to convert the percent to an actual decimal, which can either be done by moving the decimal over two times to the left or by dividing by 100. So my decimal form of 92.38% will be 0 0.9238. My decimal form of 4.67% will be 0 0.0467. My decimal form of 3.10% will be 0 0.0310. Now my second step is going to go ahead and multiply these new percent abundances by their masses. And I'll go ahead and do that in a calculator. So I have 0 0.9238 times 28, and that gives me a mass of 25.8664. 
Then I have 0 0.0467 times 29, and that gives me a mass of 1.3543. And then I have 0 0.0310 times 30, and that gives me a mass of 0 0.93. Very last step is to go ahead and sum those up. So I will take my first mass, add it to my second mass, and then finally my third. And when I do that, I get the total of 28.1507. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and check that against the periodic table for silicone. I see that silicone has a mass of 28.086. That just means that they were using more accurate percentages than we were, but that's going to go ahead and be close enough for us. So our next example is going to be that of potassium. So here I have uh, two forms of potassium. I have potassium 39 and I have potassium 41. Again, I'm going to convert these from percentages into decimals. So one, two, one, two. That turns that into 0 0.9326 and 0 0.0674. I will go ahead and multiply those by their respective masses. And I will have 0.9326 times 39. And that gives me a mass of 36.3714. And I will multiply the 0 0.0674 by our mass of 41. And that will give me a mass of 2.7634. I will sum those up. And that gives me a mass of 39.1348, which I will check against the periodic table. So potassium has a mass of 39.098. Again, slightly different here. They would be using probably more accurate uh, percents. One more time. Uh, we have magnesium. We have three different forms of magnesium here. Again, same deal. Moving the decimal over twice. Then I'm going to be multiplying it by their respective masses. Okay, so 18.9576 for our first. Two point five for our second. And two point eight six two six for our last. So we'll sum those up. And that will get us to 24.3202. And we're going to go ahead and check that against the periodic table. We see the magnesium on a periodic table is 24.305. That is going to be pretty close and good enough. Okay. So we have chlorine 35 and 37. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We have our respective percentages of abundance here. We're gonna convert them into decimals. So this is 0 
seven, six. I know that this is actually very difficult to read, so I am sorry for that. But this is what that was supposed to be. It was supposed to be 75.76%. And then we have uh, our 0 0.2424. We're gonna go ahead and multiply them by our, their respective masses. And then we will sum them up. And check it against the periodic table. So we have uh, chlorine here. So our mass on our periodic table is going to be 35.453. This is going to go ahead and be close enough again. Almost done. We have two examples left. This example is going to be of rubidium. Here we have a different uh, isotope notation, one that we saw at the beginning here. Uh, these top numbers, again, are going to be our mass numbers. And we're just going to go ahead and take the percentages and convert them into decimals. Multiply them by their respective mass numbers. And see what we get. So 61.37 for our first. And 24.186 for our second. I cleared that last one, so we're going to go ahead and have to type it back in. And whenever we summed that, that gave us 85.556. And we will check that against the real rubidium. And the real rubidium's mass is 85.468. This is, again, going to be close enough. Here we have our very last example. Here we have uranium. We have three different naturally occurring isotopes of uranium. We have uranium-234, 235, and 238. The percentages of the uranium 234 and 235 are very, very low compared to that of 238, but we will continue. Okay, we'll multiply those by their respective masses. And finally, and we will sum all those up. Forgot to add the plus there, all bad. Okay. And that gets us a mass of 237.9783. And we're going to go ahead and check that against the real uranium. 
which has a mass that is ever so slightly higher. We have 238.029. So what this would be, 